Oh, 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 easy, easy. Don't kill me before I start fishing, bro. Hey, what's up, you two? Valeo Shang here, host of the Extreme Fully Fishing Channel. Today is August 17th, 2018. It is going to be my outing number 115 of this year. And as you guys can see, once again, I am in the middle of the woods in a little creek, right? We're going to be waiting this little creek. Before I talk about today, right? I, I'm sure you guys have noticed it has been a few days since I have released any videos on the YouTube platform. I apologize for that. I was actually up at the Cape Cod Canal in MA with my friend David Ho, AKA Simplex Fishing. We went up there for some stri bass fishing and we, we actually ended up catching PBs, you know, both of us. That was absolutely great. I caught a 40 inch, 23 and a half pounds stri bass. That is my new PB, right? The Moroni Saxatilis. And David also ended up catching his new PB at 39 inches, 23 pounds. A very, very fat fish. So. <laughs> I did record some footage up there, but it wasn't anything professional. Since I used the funds from my Patreon to fund the Cape Cod Canal trip, okay? Hotel, gas, etc. right? I will really publish a video on the Cape Cod Canal as part of the Patreon perks, all right? I guess it is fair, right? They funded it, I will give it to them. So fellow Patreonites, stay tuned! There will be a link to the video in an educational blog post on the private blog coming up soon. Now, that is that. We are back to Philadelphia. Let's talk a little bit about today, okay? So today, I am going to be exploring this creek here that probably nobody has ever fished before. Very tiny, shallow creek, but there is a catch to this place, though. The thing is, this creek is actually connected to a golf course pond. Now, I don't know how familiar you guys are with golf course ponds, but golf course ponds are usually amazing, right? Because number one, they are private, so folks can't really fish it. Only a selected number of people can fish those ponds. Number two, golf courses tend to stock those ponds with fish. So for example, they stock it with largemouth bass, the Micropterus salmoides, different types of pinfish, right? The Centrarchidae family. And sometimes they will even stock it with mosquito fish, the Gambusia genus, right? So that they can take care of the bug population. And what happens is EPF is not going to be fishing the golf course pond because it is private. I don't want to trespass. So what I do is I'm going to explore the body of water beneath the golf course pond. Why? Because sometimes, sometimes during heavy periods of rain, right? Certain fish may just fall from the golf course pond to the creek. So I'm going to wade down this creek today. I don't even know if there's fishing here and I'm going to wade, uh, see if there are any deeper holes or places that are a little bit deeper and see if we can catch some fish, right? This may turn out to be a little jam. This may turn out to be an entire failure, no fish whatsoever. But I would like to emphasize before we begin this video that this particular creek here is not really connected to any of the tributaries around my area here, uh, the major rivers such as the Schuylkill River, or the Delaware River. So if we do find any largemouth bass in this creek today, all right, it is an invasive species. It was stocked by human beings at a certain point, and they have, I mean, they have have to be fallen here, you know, from the golf course pond, okay? I don't know about sizes of fish. I don't even know if there's fish in this creek. So I'm starting super slow. I got my Casking Centron 500 with my Casking Calamus Ultralight four pound casking floral coat line with a 164 ounce jig and a little aero tackle anisoptera let's start walking hopefully we're going to catch some fish all right i've been walking down this creek here for quite a little while and so far ugh, ugh, spider webs and so far everything has been pretty shallow no signs of fish you know but then I just stumbled across this little band right over here. And I gotta tell you, that band looks pretty juicy. So I'm gonna get out of the water now 
and I'm gonna cast towards the band to see if there's any fish in that place. You know, when it's overall shallow, you find a little band like this, there's gotta be some fish, right? Ooh, ooh I got something very small. That, this ain't no bass. What is that? Gee, dude, a little bluegill. A little bluegill is our first species of the day. It beat on the Anisoptera. Look at that, huh? Ooh, okay, it just fell back. All right, that counts. One, one, zero. My goodness, there's a lot of little fish around here. And they're all bluegill. Now notice, right? Not a single red breast sunfish so far. All bluegill. And the thing is, in the creeks around my area, the red breast sunfish is really the native species around the area, the native sunfish. These bluegill inside this little creek, I'm not so sure if they're supposed to be here. So I'm pretty sure that they fell from the golf course. Man, they are all very, very tiny though. And it amazes me that a fish that size was actually able, you know, to inhale the Anisoptera like that. I mean, not inhale, but just bite on it, right? I'm starting to doubt myself now. Is there really any large mouth bass in this place? It all looks so shallow. Got something else. What is this? Is this bluegill again? Man, what is this? <laughs> Yo, these fish are definitely falling here from that golf course pond. I mean, it, this is definitely not native to this creek. No way. Like I told you guys, the only thing that is native here is a red breast sunfish. This is like, it's like a hybrid. A hybrid between a pumpkin seed and a green sunfish. You guys can see it, right? From the size of the mouth, a pumpkin seed doesn't have that mouth this big but it does have the markings of the pumpkin seed here on the side the blue on the operculum red and white on the opercular flap and then at the back here you have orange white right on the anal soft dorsal and caudal fins this is definitely falling from that golf course pond so i mean at least there's some fish here my man i have to say this is a uh, pretty pretty odd pretty odd look at that huh? a little hybrid huh Definitely not natural in the creeks around the area. Oh, got one. What I got here. It is a another hybrid. Another hybrid. I mean, dude, what are the chances of finding two hybrids like this in the wild, right? That's why I said these hybrids are definitely coming from the golf course. 100%, no doubt, this just doesn't happen that often in the wild. Is there anything on the other side here? Oh yeah, I knew it. I knew there would be something over there. What is that? That's a big hybrid. <laughs> There's so many hybrids in this place. And th th I'm telling you, this is not a natural occurrence, okay? They are not supposed to be in here. Look at the size, look at the size of this mouth. This is a pumpkin seed green sunfish hybrid. Wow, okay. At least we know there's some fish. And at least we know that when it rains, something is falling from up there. So hopefully there's some large mouth bass we just haven't found them yet. What is this? You've got to be kidding me, what is this? Well, hell yeah, there's largemouth bass here, all right? But uh, please, don't tell me that all of them are this size, man. Are you kidding me? Yo, okay, at least we know now, folks, that there are some largemouth bass in this little creek, okay? Can't say, hey man, can't say I didn't catch one today, right? Look at this, look at this, man. Dude, this gotta be one of the smallest dinks I ever seen. Look. All right, let's take a shot and release this guy. Unbelievable. All right, there we go. Hey, first largemouth bass of the day. Turns out to be like a four-inch four inch dink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go. Go call your great-ass grandfather, all right? Whew. Usually, when people catch a fish that small, 
they tend to get bummed out, you know? Oh, uh, why is the fish so small? There's no big fish around here. For me, it is a, it's an entirely different story, right? I catch a fish like that, it's a positive sign. I mean, that little largemouth bass shows me that my hypothesis for today was actually right. Like I told you guys in the introduction of this video, this place doesn't have a naturally reproducing population of largemouth bass. This creek is connected to a golf course pond. In other words, that largemouth bass over there is an invasive species in this body of water, and there is only one place it could have to be here. You know, he didn't swim all the way up, you know, he went down from the golf course pond and those hybrids as well. And you know what they say, right? If there are small ones, maybe, just maybe, there are bigger ones around the area. Because you see, this creek is shallow right now, but after heavy periods of rain, the water level rises. And that's how the fish from the golf course gets dropped into the creek, right? Heavier current, some of the fish just fall from there. They can't get back up. So I'm gonna keep walking. There seems to be a deeper hole right here in front of me. Hopefully we're gonna land some bigger fish in this video. Man, who knows? Maybe there's a damn five pounder laying around this little creek, right? Stay tuned. Wow, that's another species for today. It's a green sunfish, the Lepomis cyanellus. So we got two different species, the bluegill and the green sunfish, and a few hybrids. This is turning out to be a good multi-species session. Man, I don't know about that five pound bass, but the multi-species, the multi-species is going pretty well over here. Little green sunfish gone. Oh, what is that? What is this? Wait, what is this looks different? What? Oh, it's a green sunfish. It's a bigger green sunfish. Authentic green sunfish right here with the blue rays on its face, right? A little bit purple on the opercular flap, black dots on the soft dorsal and anal fins, white and yellow on the soft dorsal caudal and anal, I mean anal and caudal fins, right? Oh boy, okay. We got all different types of sunfish. This, this turning out to be the sunfish creek. Sunfish creek. Man, where's my five pounder? Oh, 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 is that a bass? Is that a bass? That's a bass, that's a bass. That's a bigger bass. I mean, it's still super small, but hey, look at this. It's definitely bigger than the last one, yeah? <laughs> it's still a dink, it's still a dink, but the size is getting a little bit bigger. And like I told you guys, this is no natural occurrence here. There's no natural reproducing population of largemouth bass in this creek. So this came 100% from the golf course, all right? If there are this size over here, come on, there's gotta be bigger, right? It's gotta be bigger. Dang it, good. I dropped it and the fish hit. It's gotta be the biggest hybrid of the day too. You would think that this is an authentic pumpkin seed, but it's not, it's a hybrid. It's got big mouth too. So many hybrids over here. I mean, certainly a lot of people, ha a lot of people, a lot of fish have dropped from that golf course pond over the years. is that dang dude holy bejizzle man These hybrids are getting bigger and bigger over here my man look at the size of this hybrid okay so as we walk towards this little bridge area here tunnel area they are getting bigger and bigger holy cow okay Bro, I just crossed a tunnel. 
Look at this. I, I, I legit just crossed the tunnel. I feel a little bit like Indiana Jones right now. Hopefully it's good on this side of the tunnel. What in the world? Wow, okay. So there's definitely some small, largemouth bass over here. I don't know about the big ones. I've been catching a lot of hybrids, a lot of green sunfish, and just the, the, these tiny, tiny ones after I cross this tunnel. So I don't know, hmm. Oh, what we got? Dang it, dude. Even after I upgraded to a 116 ounce jig with the B vibe instead of the Anisoptera, the hybrids can still get it. 116 ounce jig, look. I upgraded a little bit, right? Try to get some bass over here. Huh. Dang it, what we got here? Another pinfish on the 164. Whoa. Yeah, dude, this dude chugged the B vibe in too, man. Boop. There we go. Alrighty, go back. Oh, got one. What is that? Oh, you got to be kidding me. It's a green sunfish this time. I'm about to give up. I'm, I'm doing a steady retrieve with the B vibe on a 160, 160 ounce jig. Maybe it's, I thought maybe some bass is gonna get it on the retrieve, right? But it's panfish after panfish after panfish. I think I may really need to come here if I really want to target bass with a few bigger lures. Today is just like the first time I'm down here, right? So I mean, I didn't know what to expect. I brought my ultralight with my small reel. But now that I know the conditions, oh, well, got another bite. Now that I know the conditions, next time I may just bring a Senko or something like that. <sighs> All right, I think this is it for today. I'm about to give up, you know, I've been out here for a few hours. Whew. Super dehydrated too, it's a super hot day and I'm using, you know, the waders and everything, right? Well, overall, I think today's experience was pretty productive. I actually ended up finding a new place to fish at around my area, right? Not to mention that I caught plenty of fish around here. My hypothesis proved to be true. All the fish in this place, in this little creek, right? There's nothing natural about it. If we caught a few red breast sunfish, the Lepomis auditus, I would understand that's a native species, right? Here in the creeks of Philadelphia and surroundings. But when you catch hybrids, okay, hybrid sunfish like that, so many of them and largemouth bass, considering that this place is not really connected, right, to the major rivers that has largemouth bass around the area, that approves my hypothesis that throughout time, fish just have been falling here in the creek over and over from the golf course. So I didn't really come here with the right gear today. It was my first time exploring this place. So I came here with my ultralight, the small hooks, and the small Aero Tackle products, right? I mean, I had a blast pin fishing, and we did get some largemouth bass, but I am convinced that in this place, there's gotta be at least one monster bass, like a huge five pounder that fell from the golf course at a certain point in history, right? So next time I come here, I'll definitely come here more ready. I'll bring my Senkos, my bass gear, maybe my 3000 reel, right? A medium to medium light rod, and I'm gonna do specifically some bass fishing. So stay tuned. I'll probably bring you guys another video from this location. Next time is gonna be all out bass. But this is it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Tie lines and take it easy, folks. P.S. If you have golf course ponds around your area that are connected to certain watersheds, you may just want to give those public watersheds a little try. All right, bye-bye.